The identity of the two witnesses. The first question that we must ask in beginning this message is, what is a witness? A witness is a person who sees an event, typically a crime or accident, take place. Um, is to give or serve as evidence of or testify to. Next, what is a testimony? It is a statement made by a witness under oath, especially in a court. A formal written or spoken statement, especially one given in a court of law. Evidence or proof provided by the existence or appearance of something. So now we go to Revelations chapter 11 and it says, And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. But the court, which is without the temple, leave out and measure it not. For it is given unto the Gentiles and the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. And I will give power unto my two witnesses. And they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days, clothed in sackcloth. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them, and shall overcome them and kill them. Next, we are in uh, Jeremiah chapter 1, beginning in verse number 4, and it says, Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I form thee in the belly, I knew thee, and before thou comest forth out of the womb, I sanctify thee, and I ordain thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand, and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to overthrow and to throw down, to build and to plant. And so the two witnesses were already known by God and had a relationship with him before they have ever entered the womb of their mothers and become flesh. The two witnesses would have been already appointed, ordained, and sanctified for the end-time office before they would have entered this world as newborn babes. Though the two witnesses were already ordained for their calling while they were yet still in heaven, once they've passed through the womb and become flesh, their purpose would remain concealed from them until the appointed time of God's visitation. The two witnesses will struggle with their flesh to fulfill their high calling as they are still bound by the sinful nature until they are touched by the anointing of God, which shall break the yoke. The two witnesses, while they were still yet in spirit form, dwelled with the Lord and has already been sealed with the 3.5 year testimony for the appointed season of their appearance. But through the process of life, they must walk the road filled with perils, trials, and tribulations until they come out and be known to all in these latter days. Next, we are in Romans chapter 8, beginning in verse 28, and it says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose, for whom he did for new, he also did predestine to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestined, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also make intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? 
shall tribulation or distress, or persecution or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Before the two witnesses were birthed, they agreed with the Lord while still in spirit form in heaven as to the destiny they would fulfill to glory, to bring great glory to God's holy name. The Lord revealed to them the very blueprint of his perfect roadmap they will follow from start to finish if they will obey him in everything that he, that he has called them to do. He concealed the plans within their spirit, and as they walk this life in the flesh, the very plans that were sown into them before the very foundations of the earth is being birthed and made manifest in the natural realm. In the same way, Jesus was the only one able to open his own scroll and loose the seven seals upon his return to heaven. So shall the two witnesses open their own individual scrolls and loose the seal appointed to them only that was agreed upon before the very foundations of the earth. This shall be the same case for all of God's chosen people who became and shall become overcomers of this fallen world. Though the two witnesses shall face much trouble in the life leading to the day of their martyrdom, they've come to accept by faith that this plan has been ordained for their individual ultimate good and to the glory of God our Father. Next, we are in Daniel chapter 12, and it says, And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was, since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars for ever and ever. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, there stood other two, the one on this side of the bank of the river, and the other on that side of the bank of the river. And one said to the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, How long shall it be to the end of these wonders? And I heard the man clothed in linen. We're going to hear this again in the future. All right. Clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, which uh, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven and swear by him that liveth forever, that it shall be for a time, times and in half. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. The two witnesses shall bear witness to everything which has transpired since the creation of this earth. They bear witness to all which has transpired during the time of Daniel and shall speak the mysteries thereof in the latter days as the books shall be unsealed. And next we are at Zechariah chapter 4, and it says, And the angel that talked with me came again, and waked me as a man that is wakened out of his sleep, and said unto me, What seest thou? And I said, I have looked, and behold, a candlestick, all of gold with a bowl upon the top of it, and his seven lamps thereon, and seven pipes to the seven lamps which are upon the top thereof, and two olive trees by it one upon the right side of the bowl, and the other upon the left side thereof. So I answered and spake to the angel that talked with me, saying, What are these, my lord? Then the angel that talked with me answered and said unto me, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my lord. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by, the, by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts, 
Who art thou, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying, Grace, and grace unto it. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands shall also finish it. And thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you. For who hath despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven. They are the eyes of the Lord, which run to and fro through the whole earth. Then answer I, and said unto him, What are these two olive trees upon the right side of the candlestick, and upon the left side thereof? And I answer again, and said unto him, What be these two olive branches, which thou, which through the two golden pipes empty the golden oil out of themselves? And he answered them, and said, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my lord. Then said he, These are the two anointed ones that shall that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. The two witnesses will bear witness, or has bear witness, to all which transpired throughout the time of Zechariah the, pro the prophet, concerning the era and the latter day. Next, we are at uh, Luke chapter 24, beginning in verse number one, and it says, now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed uh, thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And so when we go back to Zechariah chapter 4, verse 14, uh, we want to put a connection here between what we saw in verse number 4 of Luke 24 and Zechariah 4. For it says, two men stood by, by them in shining garments. And in verse 14 of Zechariah 4, it says, Then said he, These are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. And what is so interesting is that they even stood by the tomb of of the Lord of the whole earth on a day in which he risen again. And then it says that the stone was rolled away. And remember it spoke about the stone that uh, Zerubbabel shall establish with the seven eyes. So there's a connection here between the two anointed ones and the two which stood by the Lord of the whole earth and also stood by the Lord on a day of his resurrection. And it goes on to say, and as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he's back unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words, and returned from the sepulchre, and told all these things unto the eleven, to all the rest. And what is so interesting here is, if you notice, the two men that stood by, the two anointed ones, the two witnesses, while they're still yet in spirit, but have not yet been sent down by God to their bodies in a process of the birthing of a woman, they actually gave a testimony. They testified to what they have heard the Lord had mentioned earlier and reminded those who came to the tomb as to what the Lord has said. And so the two witnesses bared witness to the resurrection of the Lord. Next, we are in Acts chapter 1, and verse number, beginning in verse number 6, it says, And when they therefore came together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they stood steadfastly toward, as they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, and so uh, apparel, and so what we want to do is go back to Zechariah chapter 4, verse 14 again. And it says, Behold, 
Two men stood by them in white apparel, as we read in Acts chapter 1. And in Zechariah chapter 14, 4, verse 14, it says, Then said he, These are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. So once again, the two witnesses, the two anointed ones in their spirit form before they were sent upon the earth to become flesh, which is to take place in the latter years, they stood by the Lord on the day of his ascension. And then going to verse 11 says, which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Then returned they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey. So once again, the two witnesses was bearing witness of what they had seen and heard of the Lord and testified to the people that was there. And so it goes on to say the disciples were commanded by our Lord Jesus Christ to bear witness of all that they have seen and heard concerning him, Jesus Christ. The witness of what the disciples have seen and heard, what the Lord Jesus said and did, was serve as their testimony throughout the ends of the earth. The two witnesses bear witness to everything our Lord Jesus said and did on a day of his ascension to heaven. And next we are at Revelation chapter 11, and it says, And there was given me a reed like unto a rod. And the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. But the court, which is without the temple, leave out, and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles. And a holy city shall they tread under foot forty and two months, and I will give power unto my two witnesses. So you have court and you have your two witnesses and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlestick standing before the God of the earth. This is Zechariah chapter four. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. So at this point, the two witnesses go from being two spirits into being two individuals in the flesh. For there's no way that man can hurt the two witnesses unless the witnesses have appeared in flesh which can be harmed. Moving on to verse number six, it says, These have power to shut heaven, that it rain, not, rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. And when they have finished their testimony, so here we have three things. You have the court, you have your two witnesses, and then you have their testimony that they must speak. And it says, and when they have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and in half, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And they, shall, and they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them, and make merry, and shall send gifts one to another. This here is a celebration of Purim. Purim, according to the book of Esther, is a three-day celebration. So, according to the text, the two witnesses will die on Purim, and there will be a celebration where the people will make merry and send each other gifts, which is a custom in the celebration of Purim. And it goes on to say, because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. And they heard a voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. And so now this brings us back to Romans chapter 8, speaking about the, pre, uh, the, predestined, the predestined calling of God's people, especially concerning the two witnesses. So when we go to Romans chapter 8, verse 29, because as we can see, the two witnesses are dead for three and a half days. And when they ascend, they ascend into the cloud. And so remember that in the New Testament and the Gospels, the two witnesses were standing by the Lord as he was going through his ministry 
for three and a half years. And so it says, for whom he did foreknew, he also did predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. So remember, the two witnesses were for the Lord knew the two witnesses. The two witnesses knew the Lord before they even came upon the earth in the flesh, as we have witnessed in the scriptures. And so they were predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, which is Jesus Christ. So this is why you have the three and a half year ministry of the two witnesses. And this is why you have them dead for three and a half days. And when they do raise up, they were caught up in the clouds as Jesus when he ascended into heaven. And then it goes on to say that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Now moving back to Revelation chapter 11, verse 13, it says, In the same hour was there a great earthquake, and a tenth part of the city fell, and in the earthquake was slain of men seven thousand, and the remnants were affrighted, and gave glory to God of heaven. The second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. Ordained for this office and purpose from the very foundation of the earth, these two witnesses, having bared witness to all that was said and done, since the beginning of time shall be birth into this world, in the latter years, into souls of human flesh, as it has been since the time of Adam, to soon be called to the witness stand in Jerusalem at its courts, to give the final testimony that shall put an end to the great controversy of the serpent once and for all daniel chapter 7 and he shall speak great words against the most high and shall wear out the saints of the most high and think to change the times and laws and they shall be given into his hand until the time and times and the dividing of time but the judgment this is at the courts the judgment shall sit and they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it unto the end. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. Luke chapter 8. For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be made manifest. That shall not be known and come abroad. Take heed therefore how ye hear, for whosoever hath to him shall be given, and whosoever hath not from him shall be taken, even that which he seemeth to have. I thank you so much for listening into this message. And it's in Jesus' name do we seal this message in his blood. Amen.